Here we go! And welcome everyone to episode 71 of the 1UP XP show. This week we're taking you into a game uh, called Sons of the Forest. Now I have played the forest before and then someone had told me, hey, have you tried Sons of the Forest, which came out uh, within the last two weeks. And they're like, they basically revamped the game, made it in Unreal Engine 5 and the graphics and everything is so much better than the original game. I was like, okay, well, we'll try it out. And it actually is a lot of fun. The force was fun, but there were some minor glitches with it. But the visuals for this game with Unreal Engine 5 is absolutely stunning. And so we jump into Sons of the Forest, and there's a, an unusual character, an NPC by the name of Kelvin, who uh, I talked to for the most of this segment, as Clam didn't join us until later, but this is definitely a game that we'll jump into more down the road and we'll bring you more content for. So check it out. Uh, we're up here about 30,000 feet, flying over an island. It's raining. So what do we gotta do? What's, what's, what's going on down here? Somebody talk to me. Edward Puffetin. Is this who we're looking for? Age 63. He's, uh, he's 175 centimeters tall. That's, a, that's, a, that's an odd metric to have. Uh, he's also weighs 75 kilos. Uh, that's also another odd thing to have. Uh, you guys need to clean this up. We're American. I can't read these values. He's been missing for 31 weeks. At least you got that right. His uh, wife is Barbara Puffton, and his daughter is Virginia. Have you guys contacted them at all? Man, you guys really don't talk a lot. Yo, Kelvin, Fisheye, hey. Is this thing on? Hey. Whatever. You guys re Why are you looking at me like that, Kelvin? Never look at me like that again. I said don't look at me like that, Kelvin. You're really creepy, man. I'm getting some really bad vibes from you over there. Are you tired, Kelvin? You did not sleep well last night? Are you okay? You're really starting to creep, Kelvin. What'd I tell you? Kelvin, man, drink a Red Bull or something, bro. Did you have your dubby? Grab your dubby, bud. Drink up. Dude, stop looking at me like that, dude. You look like you're gonna eat me. Hey, do you want you? What the heck's going on? We're going down. I think Calvin accidentally shot the windows out. We're not being strapped in. You guys are staying in place real easy. Uh. Oh, gosh. Oh. Well, I fell out of the chopper. Oh, God. What the heck? He tried to bury me. Oh, well, I got this. Okay. What is this? Open emergency only. I think it's kind of an emergency. Oh, Kelvin? Oh, I'm eating them. No, I didn't mean to eat them. Calvin, I'm coming. Let me loot this stuff real quick, Calvin. Okay. I gotta... Oh, oh no. I don't know if there's anything else in there. Calvin, I got a grenade. Here. I don't know what's wrong with you, but here. Hold on. I'll help you. Oh, you just need help standing up? Oh, hey, Calvin. You still have that really creepy look on your face, bud. What happened to your brains? Are you deaf? Are you blind? What the heck? Okay, he's not blind. Follow me. Um. Okay, I can tell him what to do, apparently. the heck? See, I have a grenade. If you don't follow me, I'll blow you up. What happened to our other guy? 
We're missing a dude. Calvin, we're missing a guy. Where's Fisheye? Oh. Never mind, Calvin. I found him. He's over here. Um, we might have some problems here, Calvin. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Add items to the mat or combine them. Okay. Emergency pack. I'm going to open this. Click the gear to open emergency pack. Okay. Okay, we got a hatchet. Um, we got that thing. It's a GPS, Kelvin. Okay. We got we got this, Kelv. Okay. What else we got? We got a hatchet. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. We got a hatchet now, Kelvin. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff here, Kelv. We're pretty good. Let's power. Oh, we got some lights. Okay. Is that RGB? Oh, cool. We got some RBG in the survival kit. Okay, I think we're good, Calvin. I think we need to, uh, first of all, find a place to go, Calvin. I think we need to go this way. Oh, jeez, Calvin. This uh, this might not be so nice. I think we got to go this way. Follow me. It's getting real dark. Sun's getting real low, big guy. Don't fall in the water. I don't want you to freeze to death, Calvin. Calvin, what did I just tell you? I said don't go in the water. God, this guy, man. Come on, Calvin. How do we get down this mountain, Kelvin? Kelvin, why can't I open my survival kit? It's not working, Kelvin. I can't pull out my inventory, apparently, Kelvin. Wait, where's Kelvin? Kelvin? Oh, no, I lost the rookie. Kelvin? Oh, no. Did he fall over the edge? Kelvin? Kelvin! Kelvin! Nope, he's not down there. I don't know where Calvin went, chat. Oh, there he is. Calvin. Hey, dude. Where were you? I was looking for you. Gosh, dude. All right, let's go. What the heck is that? Oh, God, chat. It's Calvin. Calvin, you're being chased by things, dude. What'd you do? Oh, God. Oh, God. Calvin, we got to go, dude. Stop making music. Yeah. I probably should have kept that, but it's fine. All right, Calvin, listen. We need to go. All right? We need to make a, a house or something. All right. I think we should go to that island, Kelvin. We can make a house on it. Why you run so funny? What is wrong with you? Why are you all bloody? Like, I'm not bloody. What happened to you? Are you drinking water? I don't... Kelvin? I don't... I don't think you should be drinking that, bro. I really don't think you should be drinking that. See, you're itching. Probably have fleas. Okay. Hmm. Apparently, it's okay to drink. That's good water, though, Kelvin. You're not wrong. All right, let's go. Kelvin runs funny. Okay. And here we are. Shelter's coming along nicely, chat. Kelvin, where you at, bud? Currently building a house. There he is. Hi, Kelvin. Can I throw this at you? Kelvin, there's dudes after you. Calvin, run! Uh, Calvin? Calvin? Do you not know how to swim, Calvin? You should have told me that before you jumped in the water, Calvin. Don't worry, Calvin. I'll continue to build the house on my own, bud. Dude, Calvin is lazy, dude.
can't turn the game voice. Oh, Kelvin! Over. Hi, buddy! All right, Kelvin, listen. Kelvin, come here. You're going to do something. You are going to do... Build fire. Kelvin, run. you literally built a fire there, and you're... What are you doing? You're sitting on the ground? Bro. Watch out, oh, Kelvin. Wait. There's a tree oh, coming down. Tree. Oh, no! What? It's me. I'm here. Hey, bud. Hey. There's Kelvin. What up, Kelvin? Can I read this? You can, that's, you can tell him to do stuff. Oh, uh... He's deaf. Then you have to yeet him in the water. Yeet! How do you yeet them? Yeet! G. <laughs> that is... So cool. <laughs> How much more wood do you need? Hmm? Bouncing logs, bouncing Yee. logs. This is my favorite activity. There's Skipping no way logs. Life logs are just, what if it Yee. hits the house? No, it doesn't That's get on not. land. Whoa! I almost took that bird out. I'm going to get him. Got him. Hmm. Good job. <laughs> oh, get the, get the feathers. Whoa, oh, got feathers. Collect the feathers. I got him. Kelvin, what are you doing? Is he posing? <laughs> He's sunbathing, dude. So yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun, but if you have servers where you play games like Valheim or Minecraft or The Forest or any of these servers where you can have open world multiplayer games, um, definitely check out Sons of the Forest. It's a good time. It's a little scary in parts, but it is a good time to have with your friends and set up a world. But coming up next, we had the distinct honor and pleasure of sitting down with Stephanie Ukunamu, a composer that recently won her very first award. And it just so happened to be the first ever Grammy for best score soundtrack for video games and other interactive media. We'll have that coming up right after the break. And welcome back everyone to the 1UP XP show. Recently, we've had a lot of video game music and how to get involved and the meaning of it and just all the opportunities behind video game music on the show. But we have a few more segments for you, including this one, which I was super stoked for. I, I don't know if I've ever been so nervous for an interview, um, but we had the opportunity of sitting down with Stephanie Ukunamu, who is a composer for film, for TV shows, but she's also dipped her toe now into video games. And she is a gamer herself, and you'll hear that here in this interview, but she just won the very first ever Grammy for Best Score Soundtrack for Video Games and Other Interactive Media. She scored. Um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Dawn of the Ragnarok. And it is an amazing soundtrack. If you have the opportunity, listen to it, as you can find it on Spotify and other music sources. But this interview was very eye-opening. Um, what she's gone through to be a composer, um, also the background of her being a gamer, and what she really looks and hopes comes away from her winning this Grammy. Check it out. And so I am super proud and super honored to introduce to you Stephanie Ukunamu. If I said your name wrong, yell at me. Um, it, I think <laughs> I said it correctly, um, but welcome. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, so, I mean, let's get down to the nitty gritty. You won the very first ever best soundtrack for video games and other interactive media. I don't want to forget the other interactive media. It's not just strictly video game music. First off, are you a gamer? Uh, do you play video games? Do you have a background in video games? I, I do. I've been a gamer since I was a kid. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, I have. I, you know, we started with a little Sega Genesis. Yeah. I do think that the first game I ever played was Pong. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We didn't like have an Atari, but it, we definitely played, you know, it was like a legacy thing, maybe on Sega or something. But yeah, I grew up playing games with my sister. We played like all the Disney games, the Aladdins, the Lion Kings. Yep. Uh, one of my favorites from that time was Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron. That's a good game. Is, yeah, that game is awesome. And I was so happy to see that they released a bunch of the legacy Sega Genesis games on Switch. So my husband got those for me. They're just like a few bucks. So we were playing <laughs> we were playing Toe Jam and Earl together like a couple months ago. It was the best. It was amazing. But, you know, around 2000 or 2001, the first Xbox came out and I got it for Christmas and I was so psyched. And I think the first game I played was Halo. Oh, man. 
Yeah. So that, that game really changed my life in a lot of ways and it made me hyper attuned to music in games <laughs> and because every time i hear i hear the theme the main theme for halo now and it's just like this exhilarating rush that comes over me and i love film soundtracks i love tv soundtracks and you know hearing some of the great themes from from films it excites me but not in the same way that hearing the, the themes for video games do it's just this deep-seated like ridiculously immersive feeling i just like get this thrill that comes over me and i think that's that's a really that's a big thing so for people who don't really understand the impact that game music has on people you just like talk to anybody who will go and listen to the soundtrack outside of the game because it's so tied to the emotion of the experience of playing it i mean it's it's really important but you've worked on many films you've worked on the meg uh the uh, martian um, and many TV shows, Jupiter Legacy, which I am absolutely a huge fan of on Netflix. Um, but you've worked on so many things. So how do you jump from film and TV composing to video games? Is there a big difference? And is there that learning curve that you mentioned? There is a difference, certainly. Um, and I had hoped that I would be able to write music for for games at some point. The industry itself is a little separate, but not necessarily. You know, we we like to say that we're media composers. We we write music for visual media, and that right. does include video games. So the way that I got uh, that offer from uh, Ubisoft for Assassin's Creed: uh, The Siege of Paris was they were just looking for composers that they hadn't worked with before, and they wanted they didn't care like if they didn't have any game experience. They just wanted to meet you know some of the younger generation of of composers coming up because they like newer voices. They like to invite that in because it tends to it tends to bring out something a little more risk taking. It's less traditional. Like, you know, sometimes right. there's something more to say for that. So big, big props to these game companies who are doing that because they're opening doors for a lot of people like me and for women and for diverse voices to to come in and be able to have these these bigger opportunities. So they just called they called up my agent and was like, you know, does Steph want a demo for for this game that we have? And I I jumped at it because I, I had wanted to get into games. I wanted to have a career that was a balance of film, TV, and games. Right. So I wrote the demo, and they hired me. And uh, yeah, it it was it was challenging at first. Even though I grew up as a gamer, mm -hmm. you know, I understand that the music for games has to be adaptive. You know, it's right. responding to what the player is doing. Mm -hmm. But the actual logistics of how that all comes together was still quite quite new to me. And we'll be right back with more from Stephanie Ikunamu right after the break. And here's more with our sit down with Stephanie Ukunamu, the very first ever Grammy winner for best score soundtrack for video games. Check it out. In your acceptance speech, I have to say this because I told you before we started recording, I was I was in tears listening to your acceptance speech and how happy you were. Um, but you gave a big shout out to the people that have been pushing for this to be a Grammy category. And lastly, I just want to recognize all of the people who fought tirelessly to bring this category of video game music into existence. Thank you for acknowledging and validating the power of game music. This is truly such an honor. Thank you. What does it mean to you that this has become a full-fledged category in the Grammys? It means everything, and it means so much to not only game composers, but I think gamers in general. I think it, I think it just sets a precedent that what we're doing is important, and we, this music has a very wide-reaching global impact. Mm -hmm. And we have a big hand in like evolving what media music can be. And I think game music has done that forever. And so to have this category, you know, this is the first year, which is very surprising given the fact that many, <laughs> many people have worked for decades yeah. for this category to be recognized on its own. I mean, truly like over 20 years, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, the music industry was working to get that mainly because there was really only one media music category at the Grammys right. and like you know just given the fact that games are slightly newer compared to the film industry like you know games have been around for a very very long time now but you know they were they were just like sort of more so celebrating film and television versus right. games so to put to put video games in the same category as like a white lotus or something like that or like a john williams score it's like it didn't really stand too much of a chance right 
So to have it recognized in its own thing, I think is really crucial because the music itself is very different and the process to create it is very different. And it is adaptive and it's very immersive and it's interactive. And I think there's something so important about the evolution of music through games. So I think it's it's really crucial. We're all really grateful. Um, you know, I think the Recording Academy was surprised because they got like three or four times the amount of submissions that they thought they were going to get, which is very telling, yeah. right? So we're really excited to see um, many, many more people submit for this, many more people, you know, getting very well-deserved recognition right. for, for their work in the game space. And my huge thank you again to Stephanie. Genuinely awesome to sit down with her and talk to her. And then also... We gave her the 10 questions, earn a one up, which you can check out in full length over on the 910 News YouTube channel coming up here this next week. Now, we have one last segment here on the One Up XP show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And that does it for episode 71 of the One Up XP show. Thank you so much for joining us. So be good, stay safe, take care. I'll see you guys all next week.